renowned for its ability to empower developers to create animations in a declarative manner, Frame Emotion simplifies the animation process by allowing us to describe them in terms of what we want rather than how to achieve it. However, as we venture further into the world of animations, we encounter a scenario that tests the boundaries of even the most elegantly designed tools managing multiple animations simultaneously. You see, when several animations are active at once, the complexity increases and the declarative nature of Frame Emotion presents us with new challenges to overcome. Fortunately for us, Frame Emotion comes with a Use Animate hook, which will allow us to come up with more complex animations. And in this video, we will create the following one. This animation will have a pointer cursor hover across the screen onto a button which will have a shadow animation the moment the pointer cursor touches it. Bear in mind this cursor is not our own cursor, but rather an SVG image. The cursor will then click the button which is highlighted with the scale down and up and then hover away. As it hovers away, the color and text of the button will also change. So in short, we will have multiple animations taking place. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to go ahead and apply the use animate hook to advance your own animations. Now, aside from React.js and Frame Emotion, we'll also use Tailwind CSS for styling. However, I will warn you, this tutorial is quite advanced. So if you want to get to grips with the basics, you can check out my video on Frame Emotion basics and then come back to this. Furthermore, I have a job board for those looking for a job as a web developer. Every job on this site also includes the salary ranges you should expect to be paid. There is also a newsletter which you can sign up to so that jobs are sent directly into your inbox. If this interests you, you can visit webdevjobs.io. So to get up and running, as always, find a directory of your choosing and initialize a React.js project using npm create vite at latest and name it subscribe button. Then select React.js and TypeScript. Then CD into it and run npm install. After that, we can install Frame Emotion by running npm install Framer dash motion. And then Tailwind CSS, which we can do by running npm install dash d Tailwind CSS post CSS auto prefixer. And then generate the Tailwind config by running npx Tailwind CSS init dash p. Once we have that done, we can open the project and adjust the Tailwind config file with the following. This whole setup can also be found on the Tailwind docs, which I've linked below. We can then go ahead and delete the app.css file and within the index.css file, replace everything with Tailwind base, Tailwind components, and Tailwind utilities. As for the body, we can apply a background color of neutral 200. Then inside of app.tsx, let's remove everything so that we can start off with a blank file and then create the app component, which will return a main tag. And within that, a button which holds a span tag stating subscribe. This span tag will come in handy when we need to animate the subscribe text. And then at the bottom of the file, we can export default the app component. We can give the main tag the class names, a height of the screen, flex, item center, and justify center. Then for the button, an ID of subscribe button, which we will need to refer to when animating it. And the classes of background rows 700, border, border rows 950, width of 80, height of 16, flex, flex column, justify center, text for Excel, font bold, tracking tight, and text neutral 100. As for the span tag, we can give that a class name of width full. If we head to the terminal and run this, we should see in the browser a rose red subscribe button dotted in the middle of the page. The next thing we need is our cursor SVG. You can find this on a site called cursor.in by Sawyer, where you have a nice selection to pick from. For monetization purposes, I'm going to go and use the pointer hand with the index finger up. Otherwise, I think we all know what I would have picked. Once you click on the one that you want, an SVG should be downloaded. Once downloaded, you can drag it into the public directory of your project. Then back inside of the app.tsx file, underneath the button, we can add an image with the source being the path to the SVG. Then the alt property to be pointing hand cursor. ID set to cursor and the class names width 20, height 20 and position absolute. In the browser, you should see now the cursor SVG on the top of the button. Perfect, we are now ready to start animating. To kick that off, we can start by making the necessary imports. We can import use animate, use in view and motion from frame motion, and then use effect and use state from react. We can then call use animate, which returns an array that contains a scope, which is just a ref along with the animate function. This function will allow us to run animations on anything defined within the scope. 
Underneath that, we can define the isInView variable, which will be assigned to the useInView hook that will take our scope as an argument. This hook detects when the provided element is within the viewport, which we can use to trigger the animation. And then finally, we can set the ref prop of the main tag to be the scope. We can start off by focusing on our cursor and animating that. Inside of a use effect that listens out for changes to isInView, an if statement can be defined so that if isInView is true, then run the following. We can call the animate function and pass in the cursor ID we defined earlier. This means that this animation will just be targeting the image that holds this ID. For the second parameter, an object which will define the animation itself. We can add an opacity which will have to be an array containing two values, 0 and 1. This represents keyframes telling frame a motion that we want the opacity to go from 0 to 1. Then the x property, which again will be a keyframe where the x coordinate will go from 100 to minus 10. If we check this out in the browser, we can see the cursor moving along the x axis whilst its opacity increases to 1. Let's add values for the y position so that we have the keyframes 130. Again, this means that for the first keyframe, the mouse will be at the position 100 for x and 100 for y, and then for the second keyframe, minus 10 for x and 30 for y. In the browser, we can see how the cursor SVG is now moving along the y axis. We can slow it down a bit to give it a more natural feel by passing in another object as an argument to the animate function. This second object represents the transition where we can set duration to be 1. When we preview it, we can see how the cursor has slowed down. However, there is one issue. Every time we load the page, at the very first moment, we can see the cursor on top of the button before the animation starts, leading to an undesirable effect. This is because the image is first loaded before the animation starts. To fix this, we can do the following. We can create a use state where we have is cursor loaded and set is cursor loaded and have the default to be false. Then down where we have the image, we can set on load to call set is loaded and pass in true so that once the image is loaded, this state will be true. Then for the style, we can say that display is block when is cursor loaded is true, otherwise none. Up in the use effect, we can extend the if statement to include is cursor loaded and also include it within the dependency array. When we go back to the browser, we can see that when we load the page again, the issue has been mitigated. Now that that is out of the way, let's add our second animation to the cursor. We want it to scale down as it clicks on the button. To achieve this, underneath the last animate function call, we can pass in scale to be 0.5 and the delay to be 0.5. Back in the browser, wait. It seems like the scale is happening as the cursor is moving. Why is that the case? Are we not calling it after the last animate function? Well, that is because the animate functions are asynchronous, meaning that they run at the same time. To fix this, we can do the following. At the top of our if statement, we can define an asynchronous function called cursor animation. In reality, you would most likely define this outside of the use effect, but for this tutorial, it is sufficient enough. We can then copy the animate function calls and paste them within it. Then in front of each of the calls, we can add the await keyword. This will ensure that the next animate function will wait for the previous one to end. Then finally, at the bottom of the use effect, we can call our function. In the browser, we can now see how the cursor first moves along the x and y axis before scaling down. However, I'm not too happy with the scale as it's too much, and we also want the cursor to scale back up. So we can adjust the scale value to be 0.9 and the delay to be 0.05, the repeat type to be reverse and repeat to be 1. That way, our cursor click looks more authentic and scales back to the original size. For the final cursor animation, we want it to move away once it is clicked. Underneath our last animate call, we can await another one, where again we target the cursor and then set the keyframes for x to be minus 10 to go to 30 and for y to go from 30 to 80. As for the transition values, we can have duration set to 1. In the browser, we can now see our cursor animation in its final form, where it moves up to the button, clicks it, and then moves away. Okay, so that's the cursor out of the way. Let's now turn our attention towards the button. We know that we want the button to have a shadow when the cursor hovers above it, and then for the shadow to shrink as the cursor clicks on it. Once that's done, the button will change to a different color, and we will have the subscribed text transition. Back within the use effect, we can create another asynchronous function called button animation. This will first await the animate function, which will take the subscribe button ID. Within that, we can add in a box shadow and set that to be 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 0, and RGBA to be 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.9 for opacity. 
Then for the transition object, we can set the delay to be 0.4 seconds, to time it with the cursor and duration to be 0.1. We could have instead added logic so that the timing is exact. However, that seems like a lot of implementation for something so simple. We can then call the button animation function and in the browser, we should see the shadow appearing the moment the cursor touches the button. The next animation will provide us with the illusion that the button is being pressed. To do this, we can add a wait animate, pass in the subscribe button ID and then go for the box shadow and set it to be two pixels, two pixels, zero and RGBA zero, zero, zero and 0.9. For the transition, we can add a delay of 0.5, a repeat type of reverse as we want the button to come back to its previous state and repeat set to one. Now, when we preview it, we can see the button being clicked by the cursor. We also need the background and text to change. For the background, this is simple. We can await another animate function call and set the background color to be pound sign 4338CA, which will result in an indigo color. We can now see the color change in action within the browser. Our final animation will be the text changing from subscribe to subscribed. For this, we can start by adding a motion.span component with the word subscribed inside of it. We can then set the class name to be width full and the initial prop to have the object containing opacity zero and display set to none. Then associate the ID subscribed to it. At the top of our component, we can create a new use state with is subscribed and set is subscribed with a default set to false. Underneath, we can have another use effect which listens out for changes on the variable is subscribed. Within that, we can say that if is subscribed is true, then define an asynchronous function called button text animation, where we await animate with ID subscribe, which we will add in a moment, and then have opacity set to zero and Y set to 20 so that it fades out downwards. And as for the transition, we can set duration to be 0.5 and ease to be ease out. After that, we will want the subscribe text to fade in upwards. So we can have await animate with the ID subscribed and set opacity to be one, Y to be minus 20 and display to be inline as the initial has been set to none. As for the transition, we can set the duration to be 0.5 seconds. At the bottom of the use effect, we can call this function. We then need something to trigger the is subscribed to be set to true. Within our cursor animations, where we scale the SVG, we can add an on complete, which will just call our set is subscribed function where we can pass in true. Then down where we have the subscribe span, we can give it the ID of subscribe. And there we have it. In the browser, we can now see the animation take place and the text changing when the cursor clicks on it. You can now go ahead and change it up a bit and add it to your sites to make them more engaging. However, if you found this tutorial too challenging, you can of course check out my frame of motion tutorial on the basics. Be sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment if you wish to see more content like this. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe and I hope to see you in the next video.